Hi everybody, we're gonna talk about nerve impulse transmission. Now this serves as a summary because we're gonna go through the highlights of the events. In your course pack, this begins on page 99. So first of all, let's talk about what we see here. We see an axon terminal, a synaptic cleft, and a neighboring muscle cell or nerve cell. The axon terminal belongs to a presynaptic cell, and the muscle or nerve cell down below serves as our postsynaptic cell. Okay, so as the action potential arrives in that axon terminal, calcium channels open. So it is the arrival of that action potential that causes those channels to open. It says next where are the sodiums and potassiums located in respect to the postsynaptic cell during resting potential. We know that sodiums are mostly housed in the interstitial fluid outside of the cell. And in fact, that's where we have a positively charged environment. Inside the cell, we have a negatively charged environment because that's where we have our potassium ions. Now, there's less of them in there, so that's why we have a negatively charged environment in comparison to the majority of the ions outside the cell. So we've labeled the negative charge inside, positive charge outside. We know at rest, this is a negative 70 millivolt charge. All right, so let me clear this and we will move to the next questions. All right, so now we're looking at step two. Here we see calcium rushing in and we see vesicles full of neurotransmitter moving by exocytosis and acetylcholine or ACH entering into that synaptic cleft. It says here what ion must enter the axon terminal for those vesicles of ACH to leave. We just got through talking about that is calcium. Again, label the charges during resting potential. We know negative charges are inside the cell along the interior membrane and positive charges are outside that cell. All right. Top of page 100, let's now talk about this one. Once acetylcholine diffuses across the synaptic cleft, where does it bind? Right there, that's a sodium channel. Okay, so sodium channels, of course, open up and then sodium will rush in. That promotes an EPSP. So I'm just gonna put a mental note over here that that is an EPSP that we're gonna look at. All right, now with depolarization, why do sodium channels open on the postsynaptic cell? Well, we've got acetylcholine right there that is bound to that sodium channel. So we'll say that ACH binds the sodium channel. Okay, number eight, describe the change in polarity in the postsynaptic cell when sodium channels open. This one here is our postsynaptic cell. All that means is it's on the other side of this gap of space here called the synapse. So what happens is we have sodiums rush in. Because the majority of the ions are now inside of our cell, we're going to say that this takes on an overall positive environment. So now the environment inside becomes positive. Label the charges for number nine. Well, we've got the uh, positives. Let's go ahead and label the negatives. Okay, and of course, number 10, does depolarization, which is what we're watching happen here, guarantee an action potential? Well, there's a critical number we must meet and it's negative 55 millivolts. That is known as threshold. If you reach threshold, then you can, of course, pr proceed in forming a full-blown action potential. If you don't reach threshold, nothing happens. Do you know the name of this principle? It's called the all or none. So either yes, you hit 55 and you're going for an action potential or no, you don't and nothing happens. All right, so in order to put all this back to rest, we need an enzyme to come along and help us to recycle acetylcholine. What is the name of that enzyme? 
It's called ACHE. It does two things. It destroys or recycles acetylcholine. And secondly, if you get rid of acetylcholine, what happens to those sodium channels? Well, they close and it prevents further unwanted muscle excitation or nerve excitation. Okay, so if you want to stop the excitement, you got to get rid of acetylcholine. So if it was sitting here bound to one of their sodium channels, ACHE looks like Pac-Man, comes over here, breaks it down, and allows us to recycle it back into that exon terminal. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, so the charge inside the postsynaptic cell during action potential is, of course, highly positive. We might have reached as much as positive 30 during the height of this um, wave of action potential. And the charge outside, of course, is negative. So we're going to say that this action potential propagates down the length of this uh, postsynaptic cell. And as it travels, it will cause more and more sodium channels to open. OK. All right, so we have to eventually clean this up. So we use repolarization as our final step here. We know that in order to put this cell back in its resting potential, there's a few things that we have to do. So first off, the sodium channels have to close, okay? And then we open those potassium channels and allow potassiums to leave. And in doing so, we allow the inside of our cell to now return to a negative state. Well, that's part of the problem, right? If you can put the negative state back to negative 70 millivolts, that's half your battle. But now what you've got is your ions in opposite locations. You'll now have potassiums on the outside of your cell, and unfortunately your sodiums are stuck on the inside. So you need number 14, this sodium potassium pump, to accomplish the movement of three sodiums out and two potassiums back in. So it restores sodiums and potassiums to their correct location. Okay, so first of all, number 13, potassium leaving allows us to retur return that charge inside to negative 70. But number 14, that sodium potassium pump is necessary to get these ions back to their proper locations. Until you can complete returning these ions, this cell experiences a refractory period. So the refractory period is when this pump is operating. And of course, as long as the pump is operating, your cell is going to be restoring the resting state and you're not going to be able to conduct another nerve impulse until everything's back to normal. All right, so I hope this helps. This is a big topic in this chapter. In fact, this is the main topic in this chapter. If you need any help with this, please let me know.